we are at the dawning of a new era. And I feel that one of the most challenging things for seers is to be at the space of the leading edge of change and not be able to see what's ahead of you. And that's because you are at the leading edge and you're having to choose between following your ego or following your soul, allowing for your ego to be a servant of your divine self, allowing for your the truth of who you are, the truth of the oneness that we are, allowing that to guide you forward from a place of love. Today, I sat in meditation for most of the day, and I haven't been able to do this for quite some time, but I had the last two days to myself while my daughter was at a sleepover, and I allowed myself to just follow this this light that I was seeing and strangely enough I normally don't see the um, lights come in different colors but when I was just with my friend this is how she is she experiences meditation and getting visions and just experiencing it through her allowed for this, I want to say, ability to activate within me, for me to remember. And I've always said that every person has a song, like a soul song. It's this frequency that they admit. And I used to say, since the time I was very young, that I used to say that I wasn't sure that I was in the right family because I only harmonized with one stream of consciousness with my grandmother. And sometimes on all streams of consciousness, I would feel the harmony between my mother and myself. And then out of nowhere, it would just be discordant, and this didn't make sense to me, how we could all be related, but yet singing very, very different songs. And now, this soul song is knowledge that people regularly use, at least in the awakening communities. But I normally hear things in sound and pictures. And I realize that when I'm working with my clients, I've always um, drawn these symbols just when I allow myself to be the vessel for pure source to come through to facilitate healing. And... What I got to today was the light turned into wings and I followed the wings and the song and then the wings turned into water and I followed the water and everything was in harmony and then I got to this space where I was home and just in this beautiful bliss and my ego kept fighting like don't allow yourself to feel this because what if you're never going to have it in the physical what if you're just crazy what if all of these what ifs, right, that the ego throws at us in order for us to get into a battle and submit to the ego's desires to keep us small and separated. 
And finally, I just said, no, what if? And then we're dead. So it doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't. And then I heard another voice say, and if it doesn't, is this not enough? And for one of the first times, I can really say that I felt in every fiber of my being, yes, this is definitely enough. And anything else is just icing on the cake. So my point of bringing this story up is that we are at this choice point right now and we're all being asked to take a leap of faith on love, not fear. And to hear when the ego comes up and tries to hijack and sabotage and keep us small and separated in the illusions of this fear matrix program. I understand how incredibly scary or intimidating it is when you feel your soul calling you forward. And yet everything on the physical dimension or your logical brain wants to tell you that that is the most ridiculous thing and that you would be a fool to follow something like that. I understand how much that the ego clings for something on the physical dimension to give you proof and we tend not to change our beliefs until we have proof of something otherwise. So I'm right there with you guys on feeling that back and forth of the choice point. But ultimately... There's nothing to really lose. And there's everything to lose when love is lost. And so, whether you're at a stage in your life where I'm, I'm, I'm feeling someone sitting alone and sad and afraid with no one to turn to, and I'm just seeing a, a lot of different faces of those of you that will listen to this. And then I'm seeing some of you who have families and careers, but there's this, this like nagging feeling inside that something's missing. There's something not right. And then others of you that are almost in this like state of fight and some of you are, you know, fighting for what's right and fighting to bring out the truth and fighting for this and fighting for that. And I commend you all for having such conviction in your truth. I just want to remind you that your truth is something that you never have to fight for. Your truth is just what is. If there's a need to fight, there's something that you feel isn't right. There's something in you that is doing something from an insecure place. And it's completely understandable why we all would be feeling a little insecure right now as the foundation is almost nearly collapsed and we are trying to find stable ground to stand upon. 
All I know is that I didn't come here to just watch this world fall apart. And I remember all of the lights, all of the world that I was told to go and find and stand with. Now everything is starting to make sense why I remember some of you. And sometimes I say, I think I'm remembering you from the future. But there's so many of you that I remember from before I was even here. Like, we had these conversations before I was physically incarnated. And as weird as that sounds, it's something that rings so true in my soul. And there's things that I can remember when I hear your past and I can see where you are and what you looked like and these things that only make sense if I would have been right there. And um, I feel that I chose to remember the frequency of home, the sound of home, so that when I met my soul family, that I would know without a shadow of doubt who you all are and the roles that we have to play together. And so that has been something that's been challenging for me as well because when I meet you, often I'm like, oh my God, ready, let's go. And the constant thing I hear is, Wait, slow down. I'm not there yet. You need to slow down. And that's very difficult because I feel like, but we're running out of time. And why can't you just know too? Why would we waste any more time? And what is coming up for me today is the need to slow down was for me to gather more of my fragmented aspects um, to know my own truth more. It's one thing to be a channel of source and be able to tap into anything that somebody asks you. And it's another thing to truly be grounded and, and rooted in the truth of your being, like what are your preferences, what is your story. And so I feel like I've been on this like fast track and I can feel where we're all at and It just feels like we're, we're so close. And while the entire world is telling us to doubt it and to fear, I'm asking that we all just stand together in, in love and truth and know that we didn't come here to be dictated and ruled by the illusions of this world. We are far greater. We are far bigger than even our little minds can fathom. We have created universes and we are here to aid in the assistance. And the reason why you feel afraid is because you are pretending to not remember how incredibly amazing and connected you all are. It's like trying to ride a bicycle with only one wheel. It's like, it's never going to work right. And when you're not seeing the truth, it makes you feel like there's something missing.
So I invite you all to tune into what is it that your feeling is missing? What are some things that we can detox from our lives that are keeping us stuck in patterns? You know, I'm getting this visual of cleaning out my closet and... I mean, I still have clothes from high school and I know that it is time to let go of a lot of things. I know that when you hold on to things, you don't leave room for anything else to come into your life. And I feel ready to let go of the small self. I feel ready to expand and trust and love and know that even though we can't see what's coming and we aren't promised that what we desire will ever physically manifest. It's also important not to have attachments to what you know or what you feel is truth. knowing and owning that it exists within us and that nothing on the outside is giving it to us. But it's also okay to say, if this is true, show me. Because we're all worth walking this earth and knowing how incredibly loved and supported that we are. Without ever needing to fight for it. So, I hope this message finds you all well. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. You guys, if you want to work one-on-one with me or... Sign up for any of my classes for next year. You can reach me at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. Have a good night.